Hey, how you doing? This is JT. What I'm going to be doing today is I will be painting a fire tiger pattern with these little John crankbaits. They dive down to about five to six feet. I already have one painted. I'm going to go back and show you this one right here. It's painted a little bit. I've been having some trouble out of my uh, water Neo. It's uh, about time for a new needle and a new nozzle. So we'll finish up with this uh, Badger Patriot 105. It, uh, it's not that much of a detail brush, but it, it will do what we need it to do. I just have to be a little, a little bit more careful when it comes to some more of the detail. I have to cut the pressure down on my uh, compressor over here. The compressor might kick on. It's not real loud, but it's right underneath the camera. So it'll, it'll, you'll hear it. Which my compressor is a... California Air it has an eight gallon reserve tank on it and I'm set to about about 15 PSI So for the bitch will put the small coats of the opaque white on it and it just helps the other color stick to it And it'll bring out some of the brightness in some of the other colors because the uh, tire fire pattern Has some bright colors including the uh, some oranges and reds and greens that are pretty bright. So pretty much you'll just put some some small coats on it of the opaque white and set it and it helps the other ones adhere to the other paints adhere to it. So I'll heat set this and I'll do another coat, but I won't bore you with that. It's pretty much it's pretty basic. The other one that I've already done is right here. But uh, let me heat heat set this and we'll get the other colors going for you. All right, so I've gotten both of them painted here. I've got to set in my open hands. That way I could let one dry and not set down on the paper towels while I'm painting the other ones. This is a fire tiger pattern. It uh, has orange on the bottom, of course, uh, a bright yellow, and then kind of a moss green on top with some, some black accents on the side. This is one of the first ones that I've done that I ever done. I don't know if I can get it in there just because this uh, my shop light is so bright but uh, it's pretty pretty basic color you know pattern but um, I just got this this light Cassie had made it a while back and she doesn't have any use for it but I do it makes things really bright for me but sometimes it doesn't help too good for the uh, for the camera the next color that I'm going to be using uh, we'll go with the uh, the yellow usually I'll use a fluorescent yellow but I just recently got this color it's made by um, it's a F FW inks it's a, an acrylic ink or a dollar Rowney. Hobby Lobby used to carry this it was discontinued and uh, they charged six dollars a piece for these and they went on sale for a uh, dollar fifty so I kind of stocked up on them a bit and this is a newer color that I have and I'm gonna try that uh, instead of the fluorescent yellow which these are pretty good. You just have to make sure that sh you shake them up really good because the, the pigment will settle down in there and it comes with these little droppers. But they're pretty much ready to go right out of the jar. You don't have to thin them at all because they're already pretty thin just because it's an ink. And uh, so I really don't have to count how many drops are in there or measure how many is in there because it's pretty much just ready to go right out of the bottle. So we'll grab one here. And I'll pretty much paint most of it, you know, leave the bottom maybe fourth, a quarter of it alone. So then I'll come back with the next color. And it looks pretty good. It's coming out awfully fast. So we'll back down on my air pressure just a touch. That way I don't, I don't overdo it. But yeah, it's coming out pretty good. So this airbrush I'm using is a Badger 105. It's kind of got a, uh, a pretty good sized needle in it. So it, uh, it'll come out a little bit faster and it doesn't do some fine detail as good as my Awada Neo over here, but uh, the Awada is kind of giving me some trouble again. So it's about time for some replacement parts. Now on these little Johns, you have to, it's flat sided. So you have to make sure you get up on these shoulders pretty good because sometimes it'll look kind of thin on there. Well, hopefully you can see it, but uh, 
that's just that process yellow uh, acrylic ink and I will let that dry I don't have to really hit heat set these too much so I can you just got to make sure it's dry you can tell by looking at it if it's dry or not the wet spots definitely stand out so I'll go ahead and paint this other one it's pretty much like I said we'll leave the probably bottom quarter of it alone if I get if I go overboard with it and kind of go a little too far down that's okay because I can cover it back up with the orange I'll just have to be a little bit more careful with the orange You can use the um, air from the airbrush um, to help dry like if you don't want to heat set you just press down and don't pull back when you press down and pull back the uh, the paint will come out of the airbrush so if I just push down it's just air but as soon as I pull back it'll have some paint that'll come out and I can meter how fast it comes out and how far I pull it back and it's just the, uh, the double action brush you can have a single action brush which it's full air and full paint all the time which is it's not bad for certain you know applications but for what I'm doing I don't want it to do that so see that was pretty quick with that it's just because that ink comes out so good if I set it over here a little bit it won't that uh, light won't wash it out but uh, like I said I'll leave that bottom part still with that opaque white I'll change out this color real quick and then we'll come back and then we'll do the next color all right I'm back I just changed out the other color uh, this process yellow and um, painted the top two or uh, three quarters of the, uh, the lures the next color I'm going to be using is of course it's the same acrylic ink I have some other different types of colors color lines but we're going to use these inks which is this is uh, it's a flame orange um, like I said with these you got to make sure that you shake them up really good because a lot of times the pigment will settle a lot of times the pigment will settle down inside of the dropper so you got to make sure you clean that out clear it out too but they are ready to go right out of the jar so I will put some in there and with this one I want to make sure that I don't go up too high like if I went too low last time with the yellow, that's okay. I can cover it up with this orange. But with this one, I just need to make sure that uh, I keep it where I want, want it to stay and not come up too high. I know the camera angle is not quite the best, but uh, this is kind of what I'm working with right now. Maybe I could make me a stand or something to hold my camera with later. So I'll lay a couple small coats down and then, of course, like I said earlier, I'll come back and just use just the air to help dry it. Then I can apply a little bit more pigment and a little more, more color, I'm sorry. And um, make sure I blend these colors pretty good. Now, if I get a little overspray, that's okay because it kind of looks like it blends a little bit more, and that it's not such a straight line. Which I know that this really isn't a very this pattern doesn't happen in nature too much, but uh, it's a very you want it to. Kind of blend just a little bit. Let that uh, camera adjust a little bit, but. Um, you can see it there it blends uh, blends pretty good I'm happy with that and I'll, I'll do the next one and I will heat set these and then we'll go on to the next color all right I've set those colors next I'm going to be painting the back 
half with the top, I mean the spine, and I'll come down around the eyes. And I usually use a green. I have a moss green over here that I've, I've been using, but I'm going to try this other color here, which this is uh, one of my favorite lines. It's uh, Tim Gore's Bloodline. It, uh, this is probably, I really like these. I said, I'm sorry, it's uh, that light is so bright, but uh, Createx makes it. They make these other ones here, but this is their Bloodline series. And it's mainly used for a lot of makeup stuff uh, in the movies. Um, everything's named after blood and gore and stuff, but uh, this is called a vile green. And it's a pretty, pretty bright green, but um, this is probably my favorite line of paints. I don't have to thin them at all. I can, uh, if I thin them, then uh, it'll make them a little bit more translucent or transparent. But uh, these are ready to go right out of the bottle too, which I rather like because sometimes I have a tendency to either I'll under thin them or I won't thin them enough or I won't thin them enough or I'll thin them too much. But uh, like I said, these are pretty much ready to go. I want to make sure that I'm pretty precise with these, which I'll usually use the Neo, uh, the Iwata for this one, just because the needle's a little bit smaller. But uh, it, uh, it's acting up on me, like I had said earlier. So I really have to be real careful. So I've cut my air pressure down probably to the lowest setting that this airbrush will, will operate at, which is roughly about, I'm pushing probably about eight to 10 PSI. So it's kind of low for this, but that's okay. It's as long as it still atomizes the paint pretty good. So I'll try to keep most of it right here on the spine. There's my air compressor kicking on. Sorry for that. I just recently got this air compressor and I kind of really like it. I can get several paints out of because uh, the volume tank is so high, so big, it's an eight gallon. But um, this airbrush, the needle is a lot bigger, so it's going to use a little bit more air. So. What I'm doing now is I've painted it on the spine. Now I've come back around the eyes. But uh, I'm probably going to have to cut the PSI up on this. Because it's not going to. Uh, push the paint out. So I said I have to be real careful with this now. Because it's uh, going to put a lot of paint out. And it's just not working with that PSI. I'll paint the spine and the shoulders a little bit and of course come down around the eyes and darken the eyes. So that's it right there. That's kind of looks pretty good. I'll have to do a little touch up. I've got a little spot there that's kind of dark. But um, you know, I'll go back over some of these light spots. Like I said, on these shoulders, on these flat sided baits, sometimes it's uh, it's easy to uh, have thinner coats on that side or on the shoulders just because it's a high point instead of these flat spots, kind of like the spine and of course the sides. So I'll do some of these touch ups real quick and then I'll paint the other one. I'll let those heat set and then we'll come back with uh, the last color, which will be a an opaque black to do some of the accents. All right, now that I've finished uh, changing out the colors and 
Pete set these other this last color that's green. We're gonna go ahead and do the accents on the side for the fire tiger. You might hear some word party in the background, but that's uh, my little one over here watching word party. We'll be using these stencils. Like I said earlier, these are insane custom stencils made by Russ Allen. Pretty good. I've got probably about eight different stencils of his. So we're gonna use this one here with purple on it. Uh, but didn't quite come off, but that's okay. I, it'll come off. I just did a poor job of cleaning it. I'm pretty much, I'll have to use these helping hands so I can have an extra hand to hold the lure, hold the stencil, and then uh, spray the uh, the paint on there. I've already put in an opaque black, and I've thinned it out quite a bit. You have to make sure that you've uh, that you um, you be real careful with the black because black's not a forgiving color. So I find a spot on the body that I like with the uh, stencil and then I'll go over it. Hope you all like the applesauce sky song i don't but uh, this is what it looks like after that stencil's been put on there came out pretty good i got a little mark underneath it and that's just where the stencil scratched off the paint i can go back and touch that up but it's an easy scratch as long as you don't go down into the white makes it a little bit harder but it's not too bad so that's that side and then i'll throw it on the other side that way um, i can keep this video kind of short but uh, I'll do the other side pretty much you just you just flip the stencil over flip the bait over and I'll do the same on the other one all right so I'm pretty much done I cut the uh, light off so you can see but that's kind of what it turns out to be I'll just put some eyes on it uh, well I'll then clear coat it which I'll use KBS clear coat for that and it'll help seal in the eyes and with the bill it'll clear up the bill to where it's it's almost just doesn't have that little haze to it but uh, that's pretty much it and the rest of the rest is pretty much done i hope you enjoyed this video thank you